this is quite the number, but it's 10,000 US. And there's actually a very legitimate reason for that. Um, just to explain, where I live now, when you break a lease, you have to pay the remainder of said lease. Um, so I'm at 10 months in, you know, left on my lease. So that would be 10 months of rent I would have to pay to not get sued. So you paid $7,450 hard cash check to walk away. Yes. One of the you deals. recognize that not being able to provide that does raise into question the actual payment, and that is an avenue that you could be attacked from. Uh, yes, I do, but all I can say to that is an eviction will show up on a credit report, and my credit report is only showing a $92 medical bill, which I have no knowledge of. Interesting how that works. Interesting. Red's rhetoric tells his audience that I'm a liar and a fraud. He's done this for a couple years now, over me criticizing his unending constant fundraisers. Most of you already know that a couple days ago, I released the absolute proof that Red's has been lying to cover up the theft of $10,000 from his viewers. Duck, you suckers. which is, I, get, get ready guys, because this is quite the number, but it's 10,000 US. Where I live now, when you break a lease, you have to pay the remainder of said lease. Um, so I'm at 10 months in, you know, left on my lease. So that would be 10 months of rent I would have to pay to not get sued. That $10,000 fundraiser came up with $7,480 in funds. So you paid $7,450 hard cash check to walk away. Yes. I got a hundred dollar bill on my desk. I only got one because I'm broke like your dad's old tape deck. But low down, see it a sprain next to take next. And keep things clear like a windshield with rain next. I stop your flow like playtex. Cause hip hop to me is always more than just a job and a paycheck. To stay red, what you expect is something less. Like facing down a pick without a bulletproof vest. Or 19 slugs in your chest. So do you want me to be battling MCs just to see who's the best? I think you better duck like I'm Coburn or KRS. You could put your head down and you could try to rest. You could put the mic down and you could take a breath. And reevaluate the move of your next step. Getting down with my crew is your best bet. We hit the set and burn it down like a cigarette. You see the black and the white like a silhouette. But be your red, be the brothers in the blood and sweat. No regrets for the vets, the original school cats that used to record shit on cassette. Disclaimer, I will have to be as basic as a kindergarten class explaining this because the people involved will lie and straw man any word I say and use any defense that they possibly can. In the fundraiser I've shown you, they specifically asked for the money to pay a landlord. They said for 10 months of future rent payments to break a lease so they could move. I criticized this because it is absurd. When you handle landlord money, it isn't used until you have rented or lived in the place for that day, 
that you lived in it. This, by the way, is part of the kindergarten level breakdown, just so you know. Most normal people see this as obvious. If the person paid the landlord for future payments and then moved a month later, the landlord would give the money back where he didn't live in the apartment. This fundraiser should have then been refunded because the money taken isn't used for what they said it was taken for. And I'll also go into this in more detail later. This is not because of my strict opinion on fundraiser management. When you tell people what you're taking money for, it gives them the details to make the judgment on how much they give, if anything at all. This is why laws and regulations exist around this topic. It's why people have been charged with keeping 5k of fundraiser money two years in prison. Another instance is a man who kept 2,000 facing 5 to 12 years. If you knew the truth about what they did with this fundraiser money, you wouldn't have donated much if at all. This is what they said that they were going to do. They needed 10,000, 8,000 to pay the landlord to break the lease and 2,000 to move to Florida where this YouTuber would move in with another YouTuber and make content while working a guaranteed job that he had set up in Florida. This gives the donators the impression that donating this extreme amount will fix his fundraiser problem. This YouTuber had been asking for money a lot due to losing a job before this. Also, the viewers wanted to see these two people make content together, so it offered a solution and a job to fix the person's life. That is what they told people they needed the money for. Imagine they had said the truth, that he was going to move in with a woman just a couple states away instead of across the country. He wouldn't have a guaranteed job or a guaranteed place to live and didn't have to pay the landlord due to Indiana law for future rent or to break the lease, so he would never have had the opportunity to ask for such an extreme amount. The law says that a landlord must move somebody in right away, and once they do, the previous tenant only pays for the time that the apartment was empty, not the entire lease. This is a fact. They get to control the information that people know about these situations. It puts them in the perfect place to do exactly what they did with this fundraiser. Every check has been made. We have called the property management company and confirmed that he did not pay this money before fleeing. The company evicted him and if he would have given any money, then they would have evicted him after the money ran out, renting the space. Why am I even explaining this and giving you this information? You have his words telling you that he needs to pay the landlord for something that cannot legally be paid in the way he stated. Well, it's because these YouTubers and their friends take anything that anybody puts out and tries to make any lie that they can to cast doubt on any information. This exposes them as the liars they are. They are the controllers of the information, as I said. So they, at any time, could come and say anything they want. They could tell you the truth. They could tell you exactly what happened. They could tell you what they did. Instead, they change the story, add or remove certain details, all so that it can fit any criticism and give them an out. And I have absolute proof that this is exactly what they've done this whole time throughout many of the fundraisers. This exposes the horrible truth. To solve any of these criticisms, there has been an extremely easy and upfront way to do so. One, tell the truth obviously. They could solve any of these just by accounting for the fundraisers. In fact, one of the most insane parts of this story is that when they do these fundraisers, promise to account fully until the fundraiser is over and every time they fail to do so. This is an extremely troubling fact, especially in a fundraiser we'll talk about in a bit. Another big part of the equation is that to keep the donators and viewers buying the narratives that they give, they have to demonize and lie about any criticizer that comes forward. With this last issue having absolute evidence revealed, they broke down and went on live streams vet bashing and lying about each creator any way they could, not realizing that them doing so exposes them as the kind of people that would run a fundraiser and lie to keep money. The point here is that once somebody keeps money from a fundraiser like this, you can never give them any trust in the future, and they know this fact. It's not the community or the criticizers that are creating this problem. It is them. In order to keep money, they cannot account fully for a fundraiser. But after I called them out a year ago, they ran into a problem. They were getting less and less money with each donator that learned the truth. 
so they had to ramp up the fundraising to include the promise of accounting and attach fundraisers to extreme events to even guarantee that large amounts of money they desired would be given. It puts people in a position to feel bad and want to be charitable, but those same people do not want to be lied to and ripped off in the process. The donator has a struggle with the information given and what to donate. Each detail that they lie about you can examine because it gives them increased amounts of money by putting pressure on the issue that they're exploiting. I've given a general explanation of what's wrong with the situation and broke it down after showing you 100% evidence that they did not pay the landlord and do what they claimed with the money. Knowing that I was going to put out this video, they went live last night, Red's Rhetoric and FTFE, and admitted some things while lying about others. I'll break down one of their clips now. Remember though, the YouTubers involved know about this and they don't care. They make excuses to say it's fine for them to do these things, though their criticism towards others is always the most strict and unforgiving, ironically. Here's a clip from their excuse stream, their lie stream last night. Apparently, the landlord wrote down that Sean left due to an eviction rather than deciding that the apartment and the- Okay, it wasn't apparently. They took him to court. I've shown the documents. They sued him. They evicted him. He didn't show up. They, they have a default judgment against him. Every detail of it is 100% and you are lying right now, Reds, and you know it. Entire city for that matter was not the best place to live or to find work again. Again, using the excuse to find work because that's what he was supposed to move to Florida for, but Reds forgets that he didn't move to Florida to get the job he had. He moved with a woman, then had to do a fundraiser a few months later to get an apartment and still didn't have a job. So the future fundraisers that he did debunks you there. And it proves your lie, Reds. As the person who remained in constant communication with Sean before, during, and after his move, I will again not apologize for hosting this fundraiser for him. You don't need to apologize for hosting. You need to apologize for lying this whole time to try and make excuses for him because you were involved. You and him did this. You've already admitted this, so you're right. You don't need to apologize for hosting it. You need to apologize for 50% running this with Sean and stealing this money with him. First off, the documents that you found don't necessarily make the claim that he didn't pay rent. And secondly, uh, they do, because if he would have paid the rent, they would have evicted him after that money ran out. If they were paying for damages, that would be in the paperwork. We called the company and confirmed this. You are lying. This is what I was calling to earlier. He looks at what anyone finds, even though he's the person that gets to put out the information. So he looks at the things people find and tries to make any lie or excuse that he can to get out of what they found, not realizing that him and Sean being the controllers of the info here, the people that decide what people know about this publicly, it shows how dishonest that they're being. You've busted yourself with this clip and I'm glad you did it. Keep talking. I am confident that the funds Sean received were used responsibly and for their intended purpose. Well, we know what he used those funds for. He took them with him to move in with the woman and spent them with her. And because he did another fundraiser a couple months later, they were gone in just a few months. That's not responsibly using $8,000. We've talked to the company. You can call them yourself, Reds. The main problem here is that these YouTubers are helping them do this. The channel that Red sat on last night lying his ass off to make any excuse belongs to a YouTuber named FTFE. They both attacked a very small creator in their own community while literally stating they were kicking him out of the community because they are internet tough guy bullies. Just because Negative put out a tweet that said there is 100% evidence that Reds and Sean misappropriated fundraiser money from the moving fundraiser. Negative was faced with facts their recorded reasons for taking the money, the laws and regulations around taking it, the proof that they didn't give the money to the person they said they were giving it to, the rental company, and the eviction. But that's not where Negative left off. He took Sean on his word and called the company itself and talked to them to get full confirmation that Red's rhetoric Sean and FDFE are lying about the situation. He also did not attack them. He didn't make fun of them. He saw the evidence with his own eyes and tried to tell his community the truth. 
so that they knew what was going on and could look for themselves and make up their own mind. Something that FTFE and Reds will not allow their community to do with their lies. It's why they lied last night. FTFE hearing Reds lie and not saying a word other than negative is getting kicked out of their community. You guys should be kicked out of your community. It's exactly the same thing they did a year ago in the $10,000 fundraiser. While Sean was lying about why he needed the money, FTFE was in the side chat literally sharing the link to donators, not saying a word about the lies coming out of Sean's mouth. This is a concerted effort. FTFE was directly sent the court papers and proof that Reds and Sean lied to take the money. He saw it. He won't deny it was brought up last night in his stream. He knew that he was exposing his audience to the same lies that he exposed them to a year ago when he allowed Reds on his channel to attack Negative. And FTFE asked everybody to kick Negative, a smaller creator, out of their community. I wonder how FTFE would have felt if his friends would have tried to kick him out of their community back when he was a small creator. Oh wait, he knows how that feels. Reds and two of his friends were making content to expose FTFE for six straight months. When FTFE came to me with Team Skeptic and asked me to help him stop these guys from lying about him and attacking him daily on streams and uploads. And I went live, showed the proof that they were just bullying FTFE, and I criticized the attackers. And they stopped literally that day. Ironically, Sean was one of them alongside Reds. The story goes so far, I could make a two hour video and never get through all of their lies, manipulation, stolen money, attempts at taking from other creators, worming their way into other communities. I could go on and on and on, but it won't help anyone. If you want more information, you can watch my Twitter lives at Unirock TV or Rockalot. But all that matters here is this one last thing. You have absolute proof that not only did Red's rhetoric and Sean do the fraudulent fundraiser a year ago, but that their other fundraisers that have asked for over 200,000 combined dollars and raised from what only we can track over 115,000 have never been accounted for in any way. Once you have the proof in front of you that they stole the $10,000, why would you ever give them any trust ever again not to steal from other fundraisers? You can't. You shouldn't. You're being conned. Every one of their fundraisers have to be accounted for. And thank God the authorities have started the investigation into these guys. Now that the management company has every clip and every word that was stated in the fundraiser, along with the eviction and the paperwork. But until the authorities have time to get through the long mess of doing something about this, Reds has promised he'll keep doing these fundraisers. And any time someone stands up to call him out for stealing fundraiser money, and for not accounting in any perceivable way when fundraisers are over, they lie and attack again and employ other scummy YouTubers to jump on the train. An example is their current fundraiser. It was done for 15000 for funeral costs, transporting a dog, and his belongings being shipped. They promised to fully account and never have. They purposely used GoFundMe and PayPal both to take donations. The beneficiary for the GoFundMe was cashed into their own accounts, just like the PayPal money. Why would they do this knowing one, it's proven that they've stolen 10,000 in the past, and two, they had GoFundMe in front of them. They could have set the family to get the money. So if they would have used GoFundMe, the money would have automatically been fully accounted like they promised. Also, why did they keep acting like they've accounted for this fundraiser when the family and the community have no idea how much they took in on PayPal. They could have taken in 10000 on PayPal and we would never know. And the worst thing about this fundraiser is even though people out there will say that criticizing them, the YouTubers, is disrespecting the family, it's just them lying more and more. The fact is that the fundraiser is 100% misappropriated along with the other. Here's why. Reds uploaded an interview with the sister to a small channel. In that interview, this happened. All right, and we know that the funds helped with the transport of Dexter and taking care of Dexter, taking him to the vet, treating the UTI, um, but they also helped with the funeral and the burial directly, correct? Yes, we're still, we still haven't done the service for David, but it went for um, his obituary 
and his cremation. So those funds are have gone towards those so far. Um, David's ashes, part of them are going to be, um, we're going to have a ceremony here when the weather gets warmer in the mountains. And then there will also be a ceremony in Florida where... Okay, so follow me here. Because I know there are people out there who don't think that they should have just told the truth when they did the fundraiser. But let me break this down. Let's do the same thing for this fundraiser that we did for the other one. Let's compare to reality to what they said would happen. They said that they needed 15000 for funeral expenses, shipping belongings, and a dog. That's what they said they were going to do. And that's why people said, well, we'll try to give them 15000 and people donated. Reality. He was cremated with no funeral. In the interview, the sister says that they told Reds from the start that they weren't wanting any of his belongings. And the dog? They paid their friends $2,500 to ship the dog. A company will ship a dog for the distance that they needed it shipped for just a few hundred. We got a quote around $500 to ship the dog the same distance. Since the individual was cremated, if they would have been honest about everything they were doing, how did they ask for $15,000 for funeral expenses? Cremation at the most would be a few thousand, less than three. Shipping the dog is $500 and no belongings belongings by the sister's admission. How do you get 15000 when being honest about what you're doing with the fundraiser? According to the regulations, they must tell specifics when doing these charities. You can look at GoFundMe's terms of service, which is based on these regulations. Look at what others have been charged for doing to see that they 100% misappropriated this issue. They'll use the excuse the family knew everything and gave full permission for them to do what they did. But in order for us to believe that, we have to take Reds on his word. Because when all this happens, the person who gets to make these decisions is the person that would legally be on the hook for Bull's funeral and costs and debts that are left over. Listening to the sister's interview, any normal person will observe the inconsistencies in Red's words. He says burial because he knows that's what he ran the fundraiser telling people. He's a manipulator. He's a liar. We don't need interviews further humiliating and attacking the sister, acting like criticizers are doing that when they're standing up for the family for proven proven fundraisers that have been stolen from. They don't know this information. Would the sister and the mother have let Reds take that money into the same account where Reds and Sean stole $10,000 a year ago? No, they wouldn't have. The only people really standing up for the family and the individual at all are the criticizers. Well, of course, and the donators, but the donators are being lied to also. That's the problem. He is a manipulator. He is a liar. He will attack anyone that criticizes him for this. He's created an echo chamber where no action that he performs can have any criticism. And why? Why? According to him, he gains nothing from these fundraisers. Well, even ones that are done on his channel where $10,000 is kept and not spent where they say it will be spent. The only logical conclusion is that there is a gain for him in doing this. So go to the details and be scientific, be logical, Be honest about it. Ask yourself why in every situation that these criticisms come up, Reds promises to account, but chooses instead to take the money into his own account and doesn't set the benefactor as the intended person. Setting the benefactor as his own account, funneling the money in his own account, only does one thing, provably. It creates the opportunity for him to prevent an accounting, just like they did taking the money into Sean's account in the newest fundraiser. It allows them the opportunity to keep money. It creates the opportunity for him to prevent the accounting. And that's right. The fundraiser from a year ago where they stole the money was taken into the same PayPal account as the newest fundraiser. The fundraiser for their friend's passing took the money into the same account they used to steal money a year ago. They haven't shown any proof to how much they took in because they lied when running the fundraiser. They misappropriated even the last one. It is factual. You can make any excuse you want for why. You can lie to yourself while they lie to you, but factually, It's true, they misappropriated it. People are free. They can choose to trust someone if they want. That's on them. I'm free to criticize these guys when the criticism is provable and logical. 
Every bit of criticism I've given to them has been based on their own public streams and information. No matter what I say, they will tell people I'm lying. And if any of you try to criticize them, even for things that you can prove, they will still call you a liar. Also, the donators are the victims in these stories. Anyone who they ran a fundraiser for that allowed these guys to take the money into their own accounts is a victim also. Because they didn't tell them they stole the money a year ago. Not these YouTubers and not their friends. I guarantee you that they didn't tell the family that they'd stolen 10000 in a fundraiser a year ago. I personally don't believe the family was okay with them cashing the money into their own accounts and I won't believe anything that they claim after seeing the lies they tell. You can choose to believe them and even give them your money. You're free to do that. But if you are someone that doesn't allow themselves to be stolen from and lied to for your money, you need to contact the authorities if you donated. And any fundraiser site that these guys have guilted you into donating to, tell them what happened and ask for your money back. GoFundMe and other sites will refund you and then go after them for stealing the money. Any fundraiser at all where they didn't prove that they 100% spent it on exactly what they said they were going to spend it on, it is valid for you to request this after seeing what they did a year ago. And do not hesitate in contacting the authorities. The more people who donated to the fundraiser a year ago who reach out, the faster the investigation will be done. Excellent. Excellent.